before we join our ITV racing team live, we've all the latest stories now for the ITV News. Good afternoon, I'm Faye Barker. <laughs> Russia has launched one of its largest air attacks on Ukraine for months, killing at least seven people. More than 200 drones and missiles were used in the attack, according to Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky. It caused significant damage to the country's energy infrastructure and emergency blackouts are in place in Kyiv and other regions. With the latest, here's Alex Izad. Fires continue to rage in Ukraine after Russia launched hundreds of missiles and drones in the early hours of this morning. Explosions were reported in several cities, including Kyiv, Odessa and Mykolaiv. Falling debris destroyed homes and buildings, causing widespread power outages. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said this was the largest attack since August, but thanked air defense units for destroying 140 aerial targets. According to Russian news agencies, Moscow confirmed it was targeting electricity resources, with a military airfield also hit. Ukrainian authorities are now bracing for more attacks on the power grid during the winter months. And Zelensky is calling for international support to help them defend themselves against what he calls absolute evil. But there are concerns about the future of foreign aid, with incoming President Donald Trump saying his priority is to secure peace. I will end the war in Ukraine would have never started if I were president. And I will prevent World War III from happening. I know all the players. Yesterday, Zelensky told Ukrainian radio he would do everything to ensure the war ends next year through diplomatic means, but said the Russian president has opposing aims. I think Putin doesn't want peace at all, but that doesn't mean he doesn't want to sit down with any of the leaders at the same table. For him, this is about ending the political isolation that Russia has faced since the beginning of the war. The latest barrage has left at least seven people dead across the country, and the repeated calls against escalation are apparently being ignored by the Kremlin. Alex Isaac, ITV News. An Israeli airstrike has targeted central Beirut, the first in the area, in almost a month. The strike hit a building in the busy neighborhood of Ras al Nabar without warning. Hezbollah says its main spokesperson was killed in the attack. It follows airstrikes in the southern suburbs of the city early this morning. In the Philippines, more than 400,000 people have been displaced after another powerful typhoon. It's the sixth in the space of a month, slamming the eastern island province of Catanduans, wrecking houses and causing towering tidal surges. And China's President Xi Jinping says his country will continue to aim for a stable relationship with the United States once Donald Trump is in power. The Chinese leader met outgoing U.S. President Joe Biden for the final time on the sidelines of a summit in Peru. The pair acknowledged ups and downs in relations over the past four years. Here, Northamptonshire Police has referred itself to the independent police watchdog over the death of a woman whose body was found in the boot of a car in East London. The 24-year-old's been named as Harshita Brella, who went missing from her home in Corby. Detectives believe she was attacked by someone she knew. The independent office for police conduct is looking into the case because of previous contact she had with the Northamptonshire force. A murder investigation is underway. Next, Britain's bus fares are going up with the price cap increasing to £3 from January. But the Transport Secretary today refused to rule out scrapping it after next year. Well, it came as she unveiled details of a £1 billion boost in government funding. Well, our political correspondent, Lucy McDay, joins me now. So, Lucy, it sounds like a lot of money, but I suppose will this uh, go into better services? Well, the government is certainly saying it will. And actually, this was something that was announced in the budget at the end of October. And the way it will work is the vast amount of the money, the vast majority, will go to local councils and to those who need it most, and particularly rural areas. So the government today is naming places like the Isle of Wight and Torbay in 
Devon, the Department for Transport, says that this money will make bus services more reliable, more frequent and protect routes from being cut. Now, while we're talking about the amount of money the government is paying for buses, really the focus is still on how much we are paying for a ticket. Now, that cap on bus fares, that was introduced two years ago. It was set at £2 by the Tories. Under Labour, that's, not, that's now going to go up to £3 in January and will last until the end of December next year. The Transport Secretary today hinted quite clearly that that could be scrapped entirely and actually the focus will be on helping young people. We know from existing schemes that the best use of taxpayers' money in this regard is to target uh, young people um, in order to encourage them onto buses and because they need it uh, as they're accessing work and educational opportunities. Um, but we, we've got plenty of time now to design what comes next uh, as it will um, go until the 31st of December next year. Now, millions of us use buses as the most popular form of public transport. And while the cap has been extended for a year, ticket prices are still going up. It certainly looks like the government is looking to end that cap at the end of next year. But crucially here, people, voters, will not be happy if come January 2026, their fares go up and they haven't seen services improve. Indeed, Lucy. Thank you. Glastonbury tickets sold out in less than 40 minutes this morning with many fans missing out. Organisers had introduced a new booking system this year, but it's been criticised after some were left facing error messages, rejecting them from the online queue. And finally, a gold pocket watch given to the captain who rescued hundreds of passengers from the Titanic has sold for over one and a half million pounds. It's the highest amount ever paid for Titanic memorabilia, with auctioneers in Wiltshire saying it went to a private collector in the United States. That is the latest this lunchtime. She had calm will be here this evening at quarter past seven. Until then, have a lovely afternoon. Bye bye.